In today's show, I'm going to take you on a journey through my top 10 peripherals and add-ons for your Sega Genesis and Mega Drive that you need to get to get the most out of your Sega 16-bit console. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. Sega Genesis and Mega Drive fans rejoice because today we're going to be looking at my top 10 peripherals and add-ons that you should get for your Sega 16-bit console. Now everything we're going to see in today's show is in my collection at the moment, so I know the value of them, the value to me, but there may be something that isn't in my collection that you think should be in this top 10. If there is, make sure you drop down into the comments below and let us know what it is. And while you're there, you might as well hit the thumbs up button to help supercharge the channel. Right, let's dive straight into my top 10 add-ons and peripherals for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. The Sega modem was released in 1990 in two flavors. The first was the one we see here, which is just the modem and the cables and attachments needed to operate it. The second was a bundle that had the game Tushogun. This allowed you to connect to the online subscription service to play online games. There were also banking services, an answering phone service, and a number of physical games that supported online gameplay. One of these games will actually still work as a peer-to-peer -peer game. And so if you have two Japanese Mega Drives, two consoles, two copies of Cyberbore, and have a dial-up connection, you can still get the Mega Drive online in 2022. Now it's a pretty useless add-on and piece of hardware. Unless, of course, you love Cyberball, have a friend who has the same love for that game, a Mega Drive, the add-on, and a dial-up connection, then you're not going to get much out of it. But for me, it's a piece of history. It's a piece of Sega history. And if you're a collector like me, then having this attachment to build up a full end-game Sega Mega Drive in Genesis is an absolute must. Now, if you want to rush out and buy one of these attachments for your Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, you have to make sure that you have the right console. You'll need a Mark 1 Gen 1 console to make sure this actually works that has the extension port at the back of the console. And remember, this peripheral isn't cheap. It goes easily for around 130 up to 200 pounds, which is about nearly $300 on eBay. The 32X is a 32-bit console add-on for our 16-bit console. It was released in Japan in 1994, just 11 days after the Sega Saturn. The idea around the 32X was fairly sound. Offer the millions of Sega Genesis and Mega Drive owners an entry point into 32-bit 3D gaming for a third of the cost. The new add-on that needed new physical media would continue to generate revenues from those gamers who would not invest in the new 32-bit dedicated consoles for several years. I guess the hope was to get a tight grip on the 32-bit era with a double-pronged attack. Now I know there's not a lot of love for the Sega 32X, but I loved the console. You've got to remember, I was in the UK and getting a dedicated 32-bit console wouldn't come along for another year and a half. And so having a console that could produce 3D 32-bit graphics was absolutely stunning. And for me, I didn't see this as a separate console. I saw it as the Mega Drive, the Tower of Power doing this. And so that made it even more impressive. I had some absolutely classic games that I loved on the 32X. One of my most favorite being Star Wars Arcade. Wipe out enemy fighters. If you own a Mega Drive Mark I and you buy yourself a 32X, you're going to face a little problem. The 32X and Mark I don't put out sound automatically. What you'll need to do is get a separate cable that plugs into this, the microphone slot over here, then goes into your TV or into your VCR to actually get sound out of this console. But our next peripheral and add-on solves all of this, making it easier and cleaner to get audio out of your Mega Drive 32X. And it's this cable here. This cable is an all-in-one solution that takes the audio from the Sega Mega Drive or your Sega Genesis and then plums it through the 32X's output on its RGB SCART cable. So how does this work? Well, it's quite easy. You just have to take out 
your old connecting cable at the back of your Sega Genesis Mega Drive and 32X here, and then plug in this cable to replace it. Then your audio cable here just plugs into the front, and there you have it, an all-in-one solution for getting audio from your 32X to your TV without having to plug it into a VCR or have a separate cable. And you can control your audio through your Mega Drive as well. Now my next item is an item that you, you could kind of get back in the day, but you can't pick them up now, the originals at least, but there's someone that does custom versions of them. It's absolutely brilliant, I love it, and that is a custom dust cover. Now this custom dust cover here is designed to go over the European uh, Sega 32X Mega Drive and Mega CD. You can get ones that just go over your Mega Drive or your Genesis. You can get ones that go over your 32X and Mega Drive. You can even get ones that go over the combination of the Mega Drive, 32X and the Mega CD too. So there's, there's all sorts, every kind of configuration you can think of they make dust covers for. And I absolutely love this. It keeps the Mega Drive dust free. It looks really cool as well because it's got all of the markings that you'd get on the actual consoles on the outside there. So it's an absolutely fantastic piece of kit. I love it. It's got space at the back here for all of your cables. Now it doesn't cater for the modem at the back here, but I think that's such a fringe case that not many people will have to, to worry about that. But it does go around it quite nicely, covers up all the cables as well, and just keeps the dust out of all those different grooves that you find on the Sega Mega Drive 32X and Mega CD. Lethal Enforcers and the Justifier is probably the best peripheral light gum that you can buy for your Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. Made by Konami, it came originally with the original Lethal Enforcers, which isn't such a great game. The second one, Lethal Enforcers 2 Gunslinger, is a lot better, but it is a fantastic piece of kit. Now, it was two player as well. You could have two light guns in your gun games. Um, and the way that that was supported, you bought a second gun, which was pink, uh, and it plugged into this slot here, into this kind of RJ45 slot at the bottom here. And then you could have two players playing two gun games. And this gun is fantastic. Now I use this for Snatcher on the Mega CD. It's, it just feels great. And it's so much better than playing with the Sega Menacer. The weight distribution in the gun is really nice. Your arm doesn't get tired. It feels like a proper gun that you're holding here. Obviously it's not, it's made of plastic and it's blue and it's got the justifier written down the side, but still it adds to the ambience and the immersion that gun games give you. This is one of my all time favorite peripherals for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. Powerbase was launched soon after the release of the Sega Mega Drive and allowed players to play their Sega Master System carts and cards on their Sega Mega Drive. The Powerbase didn't do actually much beyond just making the Mega Drive slot compatible with Master System cards and carts, adding a pause button, putting the 16-bit processor into idle mode and activating the Master System CPU that was included inside every single Mega Drive. Sega wanted gamers to buy their new system but understood that players may not want to give up their console and games that they'd already invested in. The Mega Drive and Genesis was the fourth console ever to offer backwards compatibility to another console in its family. Now back in the day I never had the power base, I saw no point in it. I had a massive Master System collection and my Master System Mark 1 but I just went ahead and bought the Mega Drive and then bought Mega Drive games. If I wanted to play Master System games, then I'd hook up my Master System and play that later on. But as time's gone on, as I've become a dedicated collector of the Sega Mega Drive, every now and then I fancy playing a Master System game. And rather than hook up and power up the old Master System 1, I do use the power converter. And I've got to say, it makes the Mega Drive look like an awesome piece of kit. Next up, we have a peripheral, which is one of my all-time best buys for the Sega Mega Drive collection, and that is this, the Arcade Power Stick. Now the Arcade Power Stick is a peripheral that I wanted back as a kid. It was expensive. It's expensive now, uh, but it's well worth the money. It is an absolutely 
fantastic, fantastic arcade control stick. This arcade stick was a game changer back in the day for playing those classic arcade games for your Sega Mega Drive and your Sega Genesis. And I'm luckily enough to have picked up a complete inbox version of the actual joystick itself. This joystick is absolutely amazing to play games with. The only thing I wish I had in it was the micro switches. Now you can get um, some mod kits that allow you to put micro switches in. And I think, and I could be massively wrong on this, but I think the Japanese version of this is micro switch based. So maybe one day I'll buy another controller because I always want the original, but maybe one day I'll buy the another controller and put in the mod that has those micro switches in. It's definitely missing them, but with, even without them, still an absolutely chunky, lovely arcade stick to play those arcade games with. Comes with mega fire buttons and you can increase the speed of your mega fire. And there's also your pause button along the top there. So pretty simple, much like the Sega Mega Drive standard joypad. This mega stick though is a, a game changer if you play anything like shmups or arcade games. The stick here is nice and solid. And like I said, a really, really chunky controller to get your hands around. Much like our cable at the back here that allows us to get audio out of the Mega Drive and plug them in straight through the 32X without needing to stick it into a TV or VCR, we have another cable that improves the quality of life for us Sega Mega Drive and Genesis owners. And that is this. This is a three-in-one plug adapter. Now, if you're a collector of the Sega Mega Drive and 32X, you like getting the 32X, the Mega CD, and you get that tower of power put together, you'll know that you'll need three different power converters, power bricks, to actually get it to work. But this funky little cable here allows us to have all three consoles hooked up with just one power cable, which is an absolute godsend. Now this cable here has been tested and proved to have no interference or effect on your gameplay. There's a number of websites that have done a, a ton of research on this particular power brick here, and I'll share a link in the description below for where I bought it. But it is an absolute game changer for me because I now just have to plug in my Mega Drive, my 32X and my Mega CD into this single power brick here, and then off I go. One power brick, one power slot, no degradation in signal or effect on gameplay, and I can have a stress-free setup of my console. The Mega CD came out just a few years after the Mega Drive's launch in late 1991. It brought CD gaming to gamers who didn't even have a music CD player in their house. Many of the big console developers were creating CD add-ons for their consoles, including Nintendo, who had made a deal with Sony to create a console add-on for their Super Nintendo. The Mega CD was going to be a beast for its time, with a second M68000 chip added that ran at an astonishing 12.5 MHz. It also had more RAM than its competitors. Unfortunately, Sega had created a console that was groundbreaking for the day, but not for the future. And within a few years, new dedicated CD consoles came out that were light years ahead of Sega's CD add-on. The Mega CD was the first CD-based entertainment device in our household, and I absolutely loved the console. In fact, when I purchased the console itself, I went out and bought CDs. I'd never had a CD before, and so I bought a ton of music CDs to go along with the console as well. The first time I put Sonic CD in there and saw that intro, that cartoon, it blew my mind. A cartoon running on my console. And then later on, I'd get Ground Zero Texas. And again, one of my all-time favorite Sega CD games on the actual console itself because of those graphics, FMV graphics. I was playing a movie and it was just mind-blowing. Now, it doesn't have a ton of great games on there, but the great games that it does have on there are really great. And just sitting underneath my Mega Drive Mark I makes it one of the most amazing, epic-looking consoles of all time. So, we've had nine peripherals, nine add-ons, some of my favorite add-ons and peripherals for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. But what's my number one, my number one peripheral or an add-on for the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis? It's this, the six button joypad for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. 
Now, they came in many different configurations. There's first party and third party joypads. My favorite is this one, the SG Pro Pad 2. It's got the triggers at the top here, or the shoulder buttons at the top here. We've got a slow motion button here. We've got mode, start, and we've got function, which allows me to combine different button presses together and assign them to single buttons at the top here, as well as having auto fire. It's ergonomically comfortable, and it's just a great joypad. Now, you may have your own version of the six button joypad that you prefer. Perhaps it's the original six button joypad that came out or another third party button that came out or even the six button power stick, which is an absolute beast of a controller. But I think having six buttons, the shoulder buttons come to Sega's Mega Drive when it had such a cut down, such a pared down controller when it originally released allowed for so many more interesting experiences. Games like Street Fighter 2 are so much better with a six button controller. Now that was a great show. I love getting down all my old consoles and peripherals, putting them out in the room, unpacking them, reboxing them again. It's just so much fun to do. Maybe I'm a little weird, but I just love doing that kind of thing. And that's why I collect physical games, have a physical collection. It's not just about owning the physical item, it's opening them up, playing around with them, seeing them on display. I get such a thrill from it. Now, if you enjoy content like this, if you love your Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, if you love retro gaming, why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just below this video. We put out brand new content every single Monday, and so that you never miss it, you can also click on a little bell just below this video. Now, if you can't wait until next Monday, don't worry, because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy, two of which you can watch over here.